Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my unboxing and flip through of the Botanical Deck by Jessica Bott. She is the creator behind the Idiosyncra Deck as well as the Amethyst Oracle, which I also have in my collection and love. The Botanical Deck is a recent release from Kickstarter and it is a super deck. So it has a full 78 card, well actually it's a 79 card um, tarot deck, as well as a companion oracle deck that all ship together. The deck is meant to be either shuffled together into one mega mega deck or worked, which would be humongous, or worked with side by side with the tarot deck and the oracle deck handled separately, which is probably how I will work together, work with it, but I I'm not married to that idea yet, so we will see. Uh, I will link part one of this flip through in the cards, so if you want to see the tarot deck flip through, you can do that. But in this flip through, we're going to be looking at a flip through and my sort of first initial thoughts, impressions of the Oracle suits. And then we'll do a couple sample lookups in the guidebook to see sort of what we get out of those cards versus what it says in the guidebook. So with that, I'm going to zoom us in and we're going to look at the cards. So forgive any movement here as I bring us in. And I think we're looking, oh, I'm a little too far in. There we go, probably right about there is good. So with that, let's get right into it. So we have, I believe, five more suits in the Oracle deck. Let me just check the guidebook so I can confirm that for you. So we have, yes, because we have herbs, sorry, poisons, herbs, medicines, mushrooms, and carnivorous. And each one will have 10 cards, ace through 10. So um, no quartz and obviously no majors because this is just an oracle deck. So our first is the suit of poisons. And poisons are supposed to represent toxicity and potential. First we have deadly nightshade as our ace. Castor bean as our two. You as the Three of Poisons, Wolfsbane as the Four of Poisons, Jimson Weed as the Five of Poisons. And I have to say, I'm really fascinated. Oh, Mandrake for our Six of Poisons. I'm really loving that a lot of these plants are not necessarily plants I'm super familiar with, so I feel like there's like fun little trivia opportunity to learn more. We have the Buttercup for the Seven of Poisons. I did not realize that Buttercup was poisonous. I might have to look that one up when we're done here. Hemlock for the Eight of Poisons. Now I believe this is the plant that looks a little bit like, I could be wrong, but this looks like it might be the one that looks a little bit like Queen Anne's Lace, which is not poisonous. Um, and there, because there is a look-alike to Queen Anne's Lace. Rosary Pea for the Nine of Poisons. And then finally we have Tobacco for the Ten of Poisons. Interesting. I didn't know tobacco would have been classed as a poison. Interesting, interesting, and now we're into herbs. Yay, herbs! So we have basil for our ace, marjoram for our two, rosemary for the three, and I love this art style. I don't know what it is. It just, it feels so clean and simple. I'm gonna pull this out of the way a little. There we go, that looks nicer. Lavender for our four, if I didn't say it already. Cilantro for the five. Did you know that there is a genetic uh, difference where some people either like or don't like the taste of cilantro but for some people genetically cilantro tastes like soap. I am not one of those people which is good because I love cilantro. Thyme is the six of herbs. Bay leaf is the seven. Peppermint is the eight. Lemongrass is the nine. And sage is the ten. Love it. Into medicines we have echinacea for the ace. Yarrow for the two. So it's not actually that similar, really. If we look at Yarrow, I believe Yarrow and Queen Anne's Lace are the same thing. Um, so their leaf shapes are different, but they're similar. Hmm. Interesting. Aloe Vera for the three. I might have got Yarrow and Queen Anne's Lace mixed up, actually. Somebody's going to be hollering at me in the comments, I'm sure. My plant knowledge is not awesome. I have to look things up all the time. So we have chamomile for the four of medicines. Dandelion for the five. Usnea for the six. Marijuana for the seven. White sage? What does that say? Sorry, wild sage. I had to pull it in closer so I could see it in real life a bit better. Plantain for the nine. 
and sweet grass for the 10. Nice. Then we have mushrooms, and mushrooms were the suit, so herbs were the suit of encouragement and support, medicines were the suit of protection and power, mushrooms are the suit of change and capability. So we have the morale. Oh, we have the nightlight. Oh, I wasn't wrong. So this was the art card that she included with the, in the Kickstarter box. Um, and I thought it had a bit of phosphorescence and it's called nightlight. So I'm guessing that is the case. I'll be interested to read more about that. Magic mushroom for the three of mushrooms. Corpse finder for the four of mushrooms. That is a macabre name for a mushroom. Next we have shaggy ink cap for the five. That is so cool looking. I'm gonna have fun looking some of these up. The fly amanita mushroom, which is one of my favorites just to look at. It's like not good for you, but I like looking at it. The amethyst deceiver for the seven. Oh. Veiled Lady for the eight. Red Cage Mushroom for the nine. How cool is that? The Death Cap for the ten. And we're into the Carnivorous Suit. This was a, actually a stretch goal. This was an extra suit added to the Oracle deck because we met our funding goals for stretch. And the Carnivorous represents evolution and opportunity. So we have the Ace, the Venus Flytrap. Purple Pitcher Plant for the two. Cobra Lily for the three. Butterwort for the four. Well, that one, I tell you what, I feel like I've seen, I think I've had a Butterwort carnivorous plant before, and I don't remember it looking this pretty, <laughs> but I do remember that the little bugs would get stuck, like the little fruit flies would get stuck to the petals or leaves or whatever. But I thought it was green. I could be remembering wrong, though, or it could be a different plant. Common Sundew for the five. Dewy Pine for the six. Water Wheel for the seven. Fairy Apron for the eight. Yellow Trumpet for the nine. King Pitcher Plant for the ten. Holy moly. Yeah, he looks like he can catch some stuff. Oh, and then tea. We have a tea plant. Oh, Ace, and that's all it is. It's just one card. And this just says, does it say anything about the tea card? Let's look that one up first. Let me zoom us, zoom us back out and we'll take a look at some of this stuff. Okay, so set these to the side. I'm sorry for bumping the camera. All right, so tea plant for the ace. Let's take a look in our introduction. Tea, page 82. Ha! Tea is a popular beverage all over the world made by billions of people over centuries. It can be made from a vast assortment of plants such as herbs, spices, and dried fruits roots and bark for medicinal purposes or simply for enjoyment. And it just says here for the tea plant, tea is one of the most consumed drinks in the world. I'm drinking iced tea as we speak, actually. Um, second only to water. The leaves from the tea plant are used to make white, green, yellow, oolong, dark, and black tea, all of which are simply processed in different ways to achieve the multitude of flavors. Huh. And the keywords are possibility, versatility, and popularity. Cool. So it's just like a random, like, extra, not random, obviously, but it's like an extra card. So, so there are five suits, 10 cards each. So this is a 51 card Oracle deck. Um, and that is pretty exciting. I am liking that. So let's take a look at a couple of samples from each of the suits. So in poisons, let's take a look at you. So in poisons, you is the three of poisons. Okay. So for you, the keywords are remembrance, traditions, and transcendence. And it says yew trees have been considered sacred for, thousands, sacred for thousands of years, either for their long life or because of their toxicity, making you a tree of death. It was often planted as sacred sites, and Christians later built churches and cemeteries around those ancient trees. Huh. So if we're thinking of remembrance, tradition, and transcendence, it's almost got this sort of hierophanty kind of energy. That's really interesting. Let's take a look at a card from the herbs suit, which is next. And let's take a look at lavender. So it's in a four, which is still a number of stability. Um, so let's see what it has to say. Four of herbs, calm, relaxation, and dreams. That makes sense. 
Herbalists use lavender as a treatment for anxiety and sleep issues. It is believed to have a calming effect and can help with relaxation and inducing sleep. That's it. Seems pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at something from the medicine. And I've got, let's not do a four again. Let's grab the five, which is a dandelion. So five, and let's take a look at medicines. Okay, so dandelion the five, forgotten, lost, and overlooked. And then it continues on to the next page. Dandelions can be found all over, the, all over the world and have been used as food and medicine for longer than recorded history. Dandelion has a number of health benefits, but is now commonly considered a weed. Nowadays, people will more often try to eradicate dandelions, oblivious to their numerous benefits. Oh, interesting. So there's some stuff to unpack there. And let's take a look at some mushrooms. I've just opened up here to the eight of mushrooms. So let's go into mushrooms and go to the eight. I just want to give you guys a feel for how the guidebook reads, right? So in the Eight of Mushrooms, we have beauty, intrigue, and elegance. The mature mushrooms are encircled with a skirt that hangs down from the cap and has been described as wearing an undergarment or a wedding veil. In East Asia, it is considered a delicacy and an aphrodisiac, and in some African cultures, it is considered sacred. Beauty, intrigue, and elegance. Interesting. And finally... Let's pull something from carnivorous. Yeah, I might as well go into that butter, butterwort plant. So let's get into the four. Oh, it's another four, but that's okay. The four of carnivorous. And we have keywords ease, inevitability, and utilize. Butterworts are living fly paper. Their leaves are covered in sticky glue that traps small flies and ants. Unlike some carnivorous plants with their speedy traps and tentacles, butterworts simply secret, secrete glue. There's a typo there, actually. Um, it should be secrete, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then reabsorb the fluid it digests with back onto its leaves. Back into its leaves. Oh, I see. The fluid it digests with back into its leaves. I see. Yeah, so that's really interesting. So I will say, I was hoping for a little bit more tie-in to, when we're talking about the tarot and the way it reads as a tarot deck, um, for, just to kind of wrap up both decks real quick, I was kind of hoping there would be a little bit more in the guidebook that really directly correlates it to the tarot, but I can do that work on my own. As I said, it just makes it a little less beginner-friendly. From an oracle perspective, it's kind of the same thing. You're getting information about the plant and some keywords, and it's kind of up to you to unpack how that meaning is going to show up in your life. It'll be really interesting to see what this deck is like to actually work with. I will be obviously working with the tarot and the oracle suits side by side when I work with them for a full week, so keep an eye out for that. It'll probably be coming up on my channel in the next, say, month or so, because um, I'll want to dive into it sooner than later, I'm sure. And I will be able to give you some more detailed feedback about my experience working with this deck and spreads, what I was able to glean from it. The geek in me that just likes learning about plants is probably going to enjoy this deck regardless because I really like just learning these little bits of trivia. And I do think that the, as far as the actual information about the plant goes, the guidebook is really digestible that way. So it's giving you information, but not so much that it feels overwhelming. And there are in the back here some spreads. So there's a tree spread, a flower spread, and a couple, there's actually quite a few spreads in the back, and then some resources as well. So there's quite a bit to dive, dive into there. The guidebook, if you care about page count, is 96 pages, um, including the resources. All in all, production value, really, really nice. The box is beautiful, so it's in a two-part box. You can see there's a divided paper tray in the bottom. Um, the back of the box is gorgeous. In fact, I thought the back was the front at first, but it's just a slide-on lid, and you can put the deck in two parts inside. I don't know if I'll be able to fit. Yeah, you can't. You do have to split the tarot. Um, if you wanted to keep it this in its box, you would need to put part of the tarot in the box and the other part with the oracle um, and I probably haven't divided that that's the only thing is I don't really like that but I keep my bag my decks in bags anyway and then the box sorry the book actually still fits in the box I'm doing this badly but it'll give you a general idea and then the whole thing goes together like that so not so bad I could have rearranged it a bit this will look really really beautiful on a shelf as you can see um, you just have to be comfortable with sort of splitting the decks funky to get them in there and the extra cloth is nice but I will have Peggy back it for me so this came with my level of backing on the Kickstarter so yeah all in all that is the botanical deck from start to finish this again was part two if you want to see part one I've linked it in the cards so you can check that out um, I really enjoy Jessica's art in general and I like the idea that I can dive into this deck 
and get to know some different plants and learn a bit. So we'll see how the exploration goes. I would be curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. If you want to leave them down below, let me know what you think. Did you back this deck? Did you not? Would you be interested in this deck if you were able to purchase it? There may be, I'm, I'm sure, that Jessica will have some extra copies available in her Etsy shop, um, which or on her website, which is thecrackedamethyst.com. Let's just see if she's actually got that on the box here. Yeah, www.thecrackedamethyst.com. And maybe check that out if this is something that has caught your eye. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. I hope you have a beautiful afternoon or evening or day, wherever you might be. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!